Okay, welcome back. So now that I've zoomed in here, you can see the way there's white, extra white schmutz here. So that's why in the last video I was showing you how you can put a color background in so you can see um, how clean your piece is. So, but it's not a problem for us to clean it at this stage either. So I'm double checking to make sure I'm on layer one and I'm going to go back to the eraser tool and I'm going to go and clean up this work here. Okay, so that's how I could go and fix something later on. Okay, so I'll do it when I'm not uh, filming so you guys don't have to watch the labor intense there. Now, um, you can see that this isn't perfectly perpendicular back here. So you can always go back and you can either take that whole, be on that layer and say Command T to transform something on that layer. Or you can go and using this square tool, um, select it and say Command T. Okay. So Command T again is transform. So I'm going to go back up into transform and I'm going to go back to distort. So you might go back and do this a few times till you get it right. One of the things that could be a challenge um, is if you do it too much. So I've got it the way I like. So say I went and I made it bigger and then I pulled it this way and then I pulled it that way and then I went back down and I pulled it over here. If you do it too many times, um, it might just not, it's like t-shirt that gets stretched out or something. It just doesn't go back to its proper form. So, um, so you wanna be careful with how many times you move something back and forth. Another thing you wanna look at, um, see what I'm doing here? This is not perpendicular here. So, you want to keep an eye. You can probably visually see if it's perpendicular, but again, with any Adobe program, you can go under view and show rulers and you can drag a ruler over so that you can actually see whether you've gotten that perpendicular or not. Okay. So, um, and now that I've been playing with that a lot, I no longer have it aligned in the back like I was, which was my original goal here. So let me pull, I'm going to zoom out a bit because I'm too close to get a real sense of perspective here. Um, I think I've just stretched it out a little. Whoops. <clears throat> so I'm going to push it in, zoom in a little bit, pull it down. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so the next step of what I want to do is I really want to show that this is in the place and that it's getting um, the right lighting. So I'm going to move it down here a little bit. See so why it's kind of snapping into place. If that causes you a problem and you can't get something the way you want, you can go into View and unclick the snap. And then when you move something back and forth, see the way it's not jumping around so much. Um, and that also is true in all the Adobe programs. Okay. So now I think I've got that where I want it to be. You know what? Sorry, I'm going to move it just a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to stop fussing now. You can still fuss, but I don't want to drag you through my fussing while you're while I'm recording here. Okay. And I'm going to also clear this guy so that guide so it's not in our way. Um, the next thing I want to show you is how to create a little bit of reflection here. So normally this bench in life would have this, um, think of this floor as being quite shiny um, as in the samples that I showed you during our presentation. So we want to put a little bit of a reflective light in here as well as a little bit of shadow. So if I want to pull out this shadowy color, I can use this eyedropper tool. And I'm gonna, it's sort of modeled in here, I'm gonna click in the darker spot. And so when I do that, this color over here changes. 
So if I pick in a lighter spot, it changes a little bit lighter. Um, so you can see if I pick the light here. So I'm going to pick in a darker area. And then I'm going to go get my paintbrush, which works just like the um, eraser tool, meaning that you can go and select the thickness over here. So now if I look at this, see that circle? That circle is much thicker than this um, line of this bench. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to, let's see, 17. 17 looks a little bit thick too. I'm going to keep it at, say, maybe 12. And I want my hardness to be a little in between. So what I'm going to do is with a steady hand, I'm just going to pull down a straight line. And I'm going to do it over here as well. I'm going to zoom out for a moment. Um, I feel like I didn't make this line here um, dark enough or close enough to the center. Um, which brings me to another point. Um, you can work right on the same layer, but sometimes it's easier to put these shadows in a separate layer so you don't end up messing up your file. So if I turn off the background right now, you can see where I've drawn these lines. And I don't like where I've placed this line, so I can go and use um, the, trans, um, the lasso tool to select that, and then I go to the crosshatch tool, and I can move it over just slightly, and I'm going to leave it there. Whoops. I can also use my <clears throat> arrow tools to adjust it. So since this is the only thing, the bench is on this layer and there's all this white space around it, um, it's fine to keep it on this layer. Um, however, when we go and we put our rug in this space, um, you're going to be wanting to work on a separate layer when you put in the shadows, okay? So um, let me continue with this. So these, this, this darkness doesn't look quite dark enough to me yet. So I'm going to hit over top of this one more time. I'm going to get that paintbrush again. And I am going to just go over it a little. And then I'm going to stop because I think it would sort of fade out a little as I went down. And I'm going to do a little bit more at the top. And I'm going to look at it in the distance. That looks pretty good. It looks like I have this one over here on the right a little longer, so I might go and take the eraser and make that a little shorter so they both feel like they're about the same length. Okay, and then I'm going to go do it for these back two lines. But these back two lines should actually be darker because they are in shadow, so the shadow on top of the shadow will be darker. So I'm going to sample again using the eyedropper. And I'm going to take it from this back wall, since that's a darker color. And I'm going to go take that paintbrush. Um, also, the thinness here, as it goes back in space, it's a little thinner. So instead of 12 here, I'm going to go to maybe 9 and try that out. Okay, I'm going to gently pull down so it looks a little too light. So I'm going to go over that again. And I'm going to try over here as well. So I'm going up and down on that. Okay, go back. And that, that looks okay to me. I think maybe I should have made them just hair longer. So I'm going to just do one coat where I, you know, I'm back and forth. I don't know if you noticed, but I went back and forth a couple of times over there. Great. I think that's at a good spot. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go to my rug and I am going to turn off this layer and I'm going to use the box tool and I'm going to select this rug and I'm going to copy it. I'm using command C and then I'm going back to my room and I'm doing command V to paste it in the space. And then um, it's already selected. It's already command T, but if you um, 
have dropped it, then you can go and select it again and go back to um, grabbing it and going to transform. And so to start out, the first thing we're going to do is scale it. So I'm going to shift that down. If you're familiar with Photoshop over the past year, um, it used to be that you would hit the shift key to keep something from distorting. See if I um, see how this stretches, right? So it used to be that you would hit the command, the shift key to keep something from stretching. They've actually switched that. So if I just um, shrink it, it automatically keeps it in perspective. And if I were to hit the shift key, it unperspects it. So unperspective really isn't a word. I just made that up. Um, so I've shrunk it down enough, and then I am going to hover over here and try to actually. I'm going to um, go back up to transform, and I'm going to distort. What I want to do is I am going to put this rug in this room, so I'm totally wacky distorting it right now. Okay. Now I am going to actually distort it right off of the page here. Now, can you see the way that the perspective is, is wrong? It's kind of dramatic. Um, so I need to flatten it up so it comes up into the, into the space a little differently. Um, so you can see it takes a while like, to get the sense, but if I'm like this, that's like a little bit trippy. Um, your perspective wouldn't be like that. It's not laying flat on the floor. So you need to pull it out more in the to the left to get it to um, to distract to distort it properly um, and I'm looking at this wall here because that just like I used that for the bench I want to use that as a guideline for me to get a sense of how um, how the perspective is working now another thing I'm gonna shut this for just a moment see the shadow in this room so now while I'm still selected, I used this as a guide before um, for this edge. I can use this edge here, use the shadow as a guide as well. And that's fairly aligned, but you know, as things, you know, perspective, as it comes towards you, it distorts a little too. So I'm going to pull it out just a hair. Okay. I need to be in the distort. The default is to make it um, to make it scale and not distort. And I just want to distort it just a hair. Can you see the dotted line and see where I'm moving it back and forth? So I'm making it just a hair. 